Hello everyone, welcome back. So first, let's take a look at the overall structure of the project. So the project can be categorized into two parts. The first part, we talk about the, the front-end part that the user will be using. It's pretty much like the uh, facade that a user go to your website and then browse items and add items to cart and then check out. So that's the front end part. And then we have the back end part. So in the back end part, the administrator will come into play. So he will um, monitor the product list and add a new product, modify the product information, you can also delete product. So we're trying to separate the front end and back end in this project. Um, so that is to say we're going to use two different services um, for serving the front end and back end. So there are a lot of benefits come into play. Um, if you use one server, like in my previous uh, course, build an e-commerce, so there is some good side, like you don't have to uh, maintain two separate servers, right? You don't have to maintain two separate projects, but it's kind of like everything is bundled together and once say there's something wrong with the one server the other part would be you know uh, be paused or stopped as well so if we separate that to um, parts in you know different servers we uh, basically decouple them and separate the concerns but of course we're gonna have some um, trade-off say for example uh, in order to maintain the same database, we have two parts connect to the same database. And on the one side, um, we are maintaining some of the instances and entities. On the other side, we in the, um, say, for example, in the front end, we are maintaining some books, right? And um, we need to have those entities in, um, in our code. In the back end, we need to do some of the you know uh, same code for those instances say entities. So this will create a two versions of duplicate code. So this usually um, arouses some questions like data in integrity thing. But you know, fortunately, um, in the small or medium size of e-commerce, uh, this is probably fine. We only need to maintain um, the same copies of uh, domain models in the two parts, okay? So first, let's take a look at uh, our modules we're going to be developing in this project. And the first one is the My Account module that is at the front end part, which is the bookstore part. So we have the My, my Account uh, module, which can be divided into two parts. So we have the guest part and the user part. A guest is a user that hasn't logged in. So for this guest, we have some different options, say, if he already possess the username and password, he can log in. And if he hasn't, he can create a new account. And if he forget his password, he can use the forget password um, method to retrieve the password. So whenever a user trying to create an account, there will be an email um, automatically sent out to the user's registered email and then user can log in that email to confirm on the email address and then update, update his uh, information say first name last name um, password etc and after that we gonna he can use the login functionality to um, log in in case he forget a password you can input the email address and then there will be a you know email sent to him and he can access the email to retrieve the um, password. So this is pretty much like the, um, you know, uh, the e-commerce website that you see out there that used, uh, you know, e email confirmation functionality extensively. And then if the user log in, the My Account module will provide the access for your profile, the user's profile, and the user's billing information shipping information and order history. So profile includes something like, you know, first name, last name, username, email, password, something like that. 
the building basically is that there will be different um, building you know, um, information, say credit card information binding to the user. So user can add multiple credit cards to uh, himself and then later he can use that credit card to check out the products. And of course shipping is the shipping address that's binding to the user. So user can have multiple you know, addresses of them the two and you can choose whatever he prefers in the later part. The order history will display um, the orders that the user has placed and also the user will check, user can check the detailed information of the order, um, the each order that he has placed. So this is the my account module. The next one is the browse book module. So in general we should have the ability to provide a list of the book that we have. And in this book list, we have some you know, general information, say the, the book cover, picture, and book title, and the pages, you know, some of the brief summary, and things like that. And uh, the user can do some of the search to find books that he wants. He can search by category, or he can search by the keywords in the book title or do some fuzzy search like any words that appear in either book title, author's name, or description, etc. And once the user find a book that he's interested, he can view the detailed information of the book, which is a zoomed version of the book. It will see uh, more details like publisher and you know how heavy will be the book and how many pages, you know, um, the complete description of the book. And also, the user will see whether the book is available or not. Depending on the stock amount, we're going to display different um, numbers. So if the stock number is greater than 10, we're going to have the, um, the book just say it's in stock. If it's less than 10, we're going to say uh, the correspondent bounding number. Say if you have 5, we'll just say 5 in stock. And if it's not available, like there's zero in stock, so we just say it's unavailable right now until later we can change it uh, after we reorder the books from the publisher. And of course, if I want to proceed to check out a book, I need to add the book to the shopping cart, right? So that brings us the shopping cart functionality. So for a shopping cart, we need to deal with the cart item, right? So whatever, um, books we added to shopping cart should appear uh, in the shopping cart. And for this cart item, we can retrieve the data information, we can modify the quantity, we can delete the item as we want. Okay, and after that, we can um, proceed to check out. We're going to deal with the shipping information, billing and payment. We can retrieve the default one, or we use a different method that we had previously, or we can just complete typing what we want. And after the order has been submitted, there will be a order confirmation email sent out to the user. And the user will can view the summary information uh, of the order that he has placed. Okay. So that's a brief look of the bookstore front end part. The back end will have the um, admin portal. So it basically deals with the book management. So what we can do at the back end is that we can add a book update book and delete book and that's pretty much what we need. So in the back end we'll deal with whatever books um, with the database and then those books will be retrieved in front end to display. Okay so that's the general architecture of this whole project and this is a pretty much a uh, 1000 meters high uh, overview. Alright so I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.